on week six, day five, and I would like to invite Janice Sabika to come and share her meditation and revelation, Marilyn to come and share your meditation and revelation, and Karen on day five, come and share your answer to E and your meditation and revelation, if you please. Could Edie please come up and share her meditation and revelation on day five? Her group loved it, so we'll let her share with us also. Okay, so let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day and for your word given to us, Lord. Your word is alive in us so many times, but especially with this lesson, Lord. We want to respond to your word and we want to act on it and live by the power of your love and your word. Um, let us hear you now uh, with these ears that go right into our soul, Lord, so that seeds would be planted for your glory and for our eternal life. In Jesus' name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Uh, my name is Jan Sabika. As I gaze upon, um, oh, this is a meditation for day four. As I gaze upon the crucifix and see you hanging there in such anguish, I recall one lie I told, how many hundreds I have told throughout my life. But even one small white lie puts you on the cross. I am overwhelmed with my smallness. I am overwhelmed with my nothingness. I am overwhelmed with my lack. I am overwhelmed with my imperfections. And I am overwhelmed when I realize I am nothing without you. I am helpless, hopeless, aimless, and sometimes even despondent. In my nothingness, in my total dependence on you, O oh Lord, you come to me. I receive relief. I am comforted, and I am assured that this is exactly where you want me, empty and surrendered. Oh, it can be difficult to be emptied and surrendered. Before I even know what happened, I have taken my will back. I have put myself in the driver's seat once again. Thank you for loving me so much, Lord, that you come alongside me and say, It is I, your Lord. Can I drive you somewhere? <laughs> I have an idea, and I will take you to the most beautiful place you have ever been to. Your eyes have never seen what I am about to show you. And then you walk around the vehicle to the driver's side as I willingly move over to the passenger side, and you begin to drive me. I don't know where we are going. I really don't care. I only know that I am perfectly content, full of the peace that passes all understanding, and happy to not be in control of the destination. For I am confident where you are taking me is just perfect. Amen. Good morning. Um, my name is Marilyn. And I have also been asked to share my meditation and revelation. And this has to do with that part of moving into the um, heart about share the ways you think Jesus is the source of life in you. And about uh, that uh, implication of eternal life. Well, I said, Lord, this is so much above my understanding. Um, I can't really even grasp the height and the depth of your love for me. The love that we began before I even existed. And yet, I experience it so much today. And I and will for eternity. A love far beyond that I can understand but I know a love that I desire to keep, to have, and never lose. And then the Lord spoke to me and he says, I am the one and only true God. All that exists, exists because of me. And nothing that has been created uh, was created without me. You were created in my likeness. 
to glorify my name out of out of the love I have for you. You were created. As you have loved your own children and how they reflect you, your love mm -hmm. and your um, <coughs> person, so I have called you to be in me, mm -hmm. to reflect me, to reflect my love. For it, I am love. And this is how I've called you to be. My name is Karen, and I'm reading from week six, day five. Question E, express your thoughts to Jesus about his revelation of himself to you. And I wrote, Dear Jesus, Philippians 2, 6 through 11, which was my answer in question D, a scripture that is witness to me personally of the truth of Jesus, is so beautiful so profound, and so not how the world behaves, nor is taught to desire. As Father Bill shared at the retreat from Jeremiah, you kind of duped me, Lord. He said this word meant seduced, as in you led me away from evil and danger to goodness and safety by your unconditional love that you revealed to me in a way that I could not resist. As Father Corey once said, and I agree, I went from seeing in black and white to color. Now as I am being invited into a deeper revelation of you, you have put Philippians 2 in my mind and heart because you want me to know not just your love on this level, but your ultimate love and sacrifice for me, a deeper love. <coughs> and just as you want me to live in your love, you also want me to look like you in sacrificial love as well. This is not an easy love, yet you give me the grace every day to accept it and to walk in it. As the saying goes, you love me where I am, but too much to leave me where I am, for I can never exhaust knowing your love for me and all mankind. In my meditation revelation, I wrote, Lord, this is kind of a PS to answer E. This kind of love that you witness to that St. Paul reminds us of in Philippians 2, 6 through 11, is foreign to me. It does not come natural for me. I am not sure if it's because of my genetic makeup or habits learned to protect myself in this often cutthroat world, but it is not easy for me. Yet it doesn't have to be. Your grace is sufficient for me, for in my weakness, your love is perfected. St. Therese even went as far as to say something like, Lord, for me to love you as you deserve, I must borrow your love. I really like that, Jesus, because I feel like it's so true, and it gives me hope that I can love you as you deserve. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift of your unconditional love, Lord Jesus Christ, and that the Father has sent you, and that you have sent the Holy Spirit and that you now send me, equipped with your spirit, to witness to your love. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. And my revelation was, the Lord reminded me of Father Scott at St. Mary's homily about St. Valentine and St. Cyril, Cyril and Methodius. The Lord asked me, as he asked us through Father Scott's words, why did St. Valentine do what he did? allowed himself to be martyred? Why was his desire to marry others greater than his desire to cling to his life? Because of his love for Jesus Christ. Why did Saints Cyril and Methodius go to Slavic nations and spend years learning their language so they could teach them the Holy Scriptures and the Mass? Because their love for Jesus Christ was greater than their love for comfort. Love must be the driving force of all sacrifice. My love. Remember I told you all other loves are imitations? They cannot endure the fire of sacrifice. This is the love that witnesses to the world that Jesus is Lord. Continue to strive for this love. For in your desire and in your trying, I can do much to set your heart on fire with my love. Go in peace. I love you. <clears throat> 
excuse me, and it was Valentine's Day, and I could see Jesus giving me, it looked like a Valentine of chocolates, but it was his uh, heart, and it was his heart to learn to love. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today I am sharing with you my thoughts, my thoughts to Jesus about his uh, revelation of himself to me. Okay, when I was uh, in that age of maturity, when I started having gentle dreams of a happy life, I decided to embrace a life of simplicity, a mediocre life, if you will, where, where I could rest at night and not deal with problems of any sort. But of course, it did not happen. I was destined to move forward, brave the challenges of life, and refuse to fail. I did pretty well and accomplished most of my important goals, but there was so much more to strive for, so I continued to endeavor. I am a weak person physically, and during those times of exerting my effort and energy, my health was not up to par. I had many health issues, and one of them was anxiety, big time, which I am convinced the cause of all my other health problems. Anyway, I did not quit. I carried, I carried on in spite, in spite of hindrances and disappointments. Like I said, I refuse to fail. I believe somebody up there wanted me to succeed. Deep in my heart, I know it was you, my Lord Jesus. Ever since I asked you to take care of me and my affairs, long time ago it was. And since then, you have been my companion in all my struggles. You put up with me, with all my silliness, my stubbornness, and weakness. I could feel, let me see now. You always pick me up when I was down. I could feel your healing touch whenever I was miserable. I truly believe, Lord, you are the source of my strength and courage and hope. Nobody else could make me feel secure, but only you, Lord. As I focus on you, my level of anxiety tends to reduce in intensity, and I find peace. How could I ever thank you enough for your incredible love and mercy. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord Jesus said, My dear one, I formed you in your mother's womb and will you a purpose of your existence. I have not gifted you with abundant energy, but fragility. This will give you a chance to prove yourself. You are living in a very turbulent world and so expect many conflicts and confusion. Stop worrying. Trust me in all your thoughts. Do not weary yourself about whether you can cope with the pressures. I know you are weak, but I do not despise it. I understand how difficult your journey has been. Your weakness draws me closer to you, and I will bless you in all moments of your life. And I am being blessed. Thank you. Thank you for beautiful words from the Lord for all of us. Um, so, let us begin um, by asking the Lord to speak to our hearts today. Um, Lord, we love you so much, and we're here because we want to know you. 
We want to know how to serve you. We want to love you and show, um, show you our love. And so guide us now. Let us hear you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now we're going to look at three points today um, in, from John week six, days three, four, and five. And so the first point is Jesus was accused of healing on the Sabbath. That's John 5, 10 through 16. The second point we'll cover is Jesus' equality with God the Father, which is revealed to us in John 5, 17 through 30. And then the third point is the fullness or completion of the witnesses that Jesus is the Messiah. And we look at that with John 5, 31 through 47. So, in our last lesson, we encountered Jesus and his power to heal a man who was paralyzed for 38 years. Possibly, one of the commentaries said that the man's 38 years was a symbol of the hopelessness the Israelites had. 38 years, they were feeling hopeless in the wilderness. It was almost 40 years that they were in the wilderness. So we see here in this healing, we see Jesus' divine power. Where human power had failed, Jesus revealed God's divine power. Jesus revealed his divine authority. There was no hesitancy, no timidity in Jesus, but full divine consciousness of power to carry out his will to heal the man. He spoke it and it happened. Jesus had the voice of divine mercy Jesus had infinite power under the guidance of mercy. And so we remember today, many times as we pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet, we remember his mercies to us in so many ways. Now, by Jesus' command, the man was immediately made whole. Now the miracle was instantaneous and complete. What Jesus did physically to this man, he is ready and willing to do for us. Not only physically, but spiritually. The question lies before us, do you want to be well? And so last week we responded to that, that question. Many of us are crippled by sin, as was this man. We see in our lesson today when Jesus encounters this man in the temple, and he says to him, now you are well again. Be sure not to sin anymore, or something worse may happen to you. That's kind of a scary thought, isn't it? So in our lesson this week, we were told in Matthew 12, 43 through 45, I want to read that to you. These are Jesus' words. This is Jesus speaking. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, it wanders waterless country, looking for a place to rest and cannot find one. Then it says, I will return to the home I came from. But on arrival, finding it unoccupied, swept, and tidied, it then goes off and collects seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they go in and they set up house there so that the man ends up by being worse than he was before. It is what will happen to this evil generation. So we need to um, know that when we are set free, we need to we need to fill ourselves. So that scripture to me was a scary thought. The words of Jesus to the man who had been healed most likely was healed of an unclean spirit. And so Jesus gave warning to the man. So this is a lesson for us as well. When we are delivered from an unclean spirit, what are we supposed to do? Even when we reject that spirit from us. Um, we, what are we supposed to do? We're to fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit. That's when we say, come Holy Spirit, fill me and fill my presence. And so we, we reject that spirit that's contrary to the spirit of Jesus, and then we ask Jesus to fill us. And, and we, pray, we do that through praise and worship. Remember we've talked about before, the battle is won through praise. And so there was this, happened to me one time, I think I shared this with you before, I was carrying, I always carry cups upstairs with water. And so one day I was coming down the stairs with all those cups all at one time. And Kenny and I were on our way to Mass. He was already at the bottom of the stairs. And so I'm coming down and I fell forward 
and it and it was it was a difficult thing. But what I did was was like, oh my gosh, all the cups broke. They went down on the tile, and it was a mess. But I just I just started praising God. I thank you, God, that I didn't break anything. I thank you, God, that I didn't hit my head. I thank you, Lord. I praise you and I bless your name. And and I was just thankful that I had been delivered of my clumsiness. <laughs> I guess I don't know. But anyway, I I did begin to praise God. This happened to me one time, and it was June 27, uh, 2021. Uh, Ellie and her husband were visiting my home and they wanted to see the backyard and so they hadn't been there before so we were looking at the backyard. Now Kenny and I have lived there, we lived there for now it's 44 years but then it was 43 years and so anyway what, ha what happened was now we've been there long enough that I know there's a little step down but I turned to talk to them and I missed the step that I'd gone by 43 years and so I fell and I banged my knee and and so um, Ellie's husband wanted to come help me up and I said just a minute I praise you Jesus I thank you Jesus I didn't break anything I don't you know I just I just praised God before I let him help me up to thank him for and so really the battle is won in many different ways the battle we begin to praise God when we come into our home and you know that somebody's angry or upset or discouraged or anxious or whatever just begin to praise God that's how we battle we begin to praise God and thank him and when we do reject anything we need to fill ourselves again um, my first experience you'll notice that when we prayed the deliverance prayer this morning the reason I began praying um, that those spirits would be gone without noise, touching, or harming anyone was when I was teaching the, the third graders CCD in this room. Uh, we, they were divided into four at the time. And when I came to Mass that morning, because we have Mass in this place, and when I came to Mass that, this morning, I, that particular morning on Monday, I always taught on Monday afternoons, I came in and I thought, wow, normally I didn't come on Mondays because I stayed to to um, make my lesson for the children. And so there was popcorn all over the place and there was trash in the building as we were watching Mass. Mass used to be on a platform in this room. And so I thought, oh my gosh, where did all this, this stuff come from? Well, the night before, the people came to this church to play bingo. And you know how anxious people get, come on, B12, B12, B12. No, no, oh, oh, one, oh, one. So everybody is just, they're so anxious, they want to win, 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 win. And so, because uh, money was being given away, B10, B10, B10. And so, now that anxiety, that spirit, when I saw the popcorn, I said, oh my gosh, no wonder these kids, I had a few kids that were so anxious, so agitated in class, and I couldn't figure out why, but till I came to that mass that Monday morning, they hadn't cleaned up the, the physical mess, and so I thought there's spiritual mess here as well. So I came early that day, and I came into the building, Sister Caroline was here at the time, and she always went outside the building to welcome the children. And so I was in the building by myself, and I, and I, and I prayed a deliverance prayer. And when I commanded that spirit of anxiety to leave, Guess what happened? The children. We could, I could hear the shaking of the windows and, and this, this like this rumbling noise. And I thought, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. From now on, I'm going to say I'm going to command these spirits to leave without noise touching or hurting anyone, yeah. because uh, it is an, it was an active spirit, but it was gone. And you know, from that point on, I always prayed a deliverance prayer before we would begin, before we begin our meetings. Sometimes I'll do it within the meeting. But to clean out our houses, we need to do that. Take your deliverance prayer, because most all of you have a spiritual resource book that you can use. You can take that in the way I do it, because I did give out blessed salt. We gave out blessed salt at the retreat, as you know. I take the blessed salt, and I will start at my entry door. And from that point on, I will, I will move, and I will pray that prayer out loud, and then I would sprinkle the blessed salt, and then I walk through my whole house, room by room, praising Jesus, because the enemy flees when the name of Jesus is praised and lifted up. So that's that's how I pray in my home. But I suggest that you pray that. You know, we cleanse ourselves with reconciliation at least once a month, or if we can, when we can. Some people I know go every week. Wow. <laughs> anyway, I don't do that. <laughs> 
the thing is, we cleanse ourselves, we want to cleanse our homes too. That Because people come into our homes, people are anxious, people are angry. Sometimes it's joy, but a lot of times it's not. But just in our own family situations. So I just started the doorway. I pray the Deliverance Prayer that's in the Spiritual Resource booklet on page 31. And then I move through the house, blessing each room with less salt, praising the name of Jesus. So you might try it. Because it works. <laughs> so anyway, the scary thought was the enemy coming back in and bringing the seven buddies with him. That's scary. So Jesus gave warning to the man. So this is a lesson for us. As I said, we are delivered from an unclean spirit. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to bring the Holy Spirit into, into that place. We can do it by, by reading the Word. We can do it by praising Jesus. We can do it by Eucharistic celebration. We are to fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit so we can continue to walk in freedom. Now, we fill ourselves with sacramental living. Most of us, we go to Mass. We receive the Eucharist. We're seeking out the... Uh, the go and have the sacrament of reconciliation and experiencing the Word of God in our hearts by reading the Word of God, staying in fellowship with other believers. Hebrews 10.25 says this, Do not stay away from the meetings of the community as some do, but encourage each other to go, the more so as the day draws near. We are encouraged by also our devotions to pray the rosary, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and going to adoration before of the Blessed Sacrament. So now, the Pharisees, we're going to get to our lesson, the Pharisees were not happy that the man was healed. More, they were infuriated that the man was healed on the Sabbath. They had total disregard for the man who was healed, and the scripture says in John 5, 16, therefore, the Jews began to persecute Jesus because he healed someone on the Sabbath. That was what they were bringing up against him. They considered it as if it was Jesus working on the Sabbath day and work was not allowed. Just to give you an idea, the Pharisees were not priests, okay? They were keepers of the law. And, and that's why they were so intent on keeping the law. Uh, they would point at people and that was wrong and don't do that. And, and so they had something of the law against Jesus. Now the Sadducees were the priests. But they were jealous of Jesus' power. They had a Jezebel spirit. And sometimes we run into that. Some people are jealous because, because we're holy, or we love the Lord, or, or they see us happy. And some people will, will have a Jezebel spirit coming against us. A Jezebel spirit, of course, as you know, is a jealous spirit, one spirit who wants to control things and so forth. The Jezebel spirit can be very strong, but we want our way and we want to be in control. So anyway, Jesus, they came against Jesus because he healed on the Sabbath. I think something that we learn from this story of healing um, <coughs> is that when we are healed, we are called to change our ways, right? When we're healed, we're called to change our ways. So let us ask ourselves, when God hears our prayers and heals us or helps us, do we change that in our lives? Are we changed? Does change take place because of his mercy and grace towards us? Uh, when I was set free from the spirit of pain, from the suicide disease I had for five years, I was so grateful, so thankful. So I became so hungry for God that I wanted to know him and, and I wanted to serve him and I, and I wanted to know that I wanted him to know I was grateful and I wanted him to know I loved him. And I began reading the Bible, really without understanding, because to begin with, I didn't have a teacher. We were told by St. Paul, faith comes through hearing, and hearing comes from the word of Christ. Now, I want to read to you Romans 10, um, because I needed a teacher to help me understand um, and what happens when we understand major beautiful things. And so this is the scripture in Romans chapter 10. Um, the word that is the faith we proclaim is near to us. It is on our lips and in our hearts. If we confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. By believing from the heart, you are made righteous. By confessing with your lips, you are saved. And so, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But, the scripture says, they will not ask for his help unless they believe in him. And they will not believe in him unless they have heard of him. And they will not hear of him unless they get a preacher. And they will never have a preacher unless one is sent. But as scripture says, 
Faith comes through what is heard, and what is heard comes from the Word of Christ. So I have to tell all of you here that you are the ones who carry the Word of God in you, and so you can teach others. And um, sometimes we think it's scary to try to teach others, and honestly, I can tell you it really is. It's scary sometimes, <laughs> because you want to speak the truth. When I first started teaching, I always wrote down my lectures, and in the column on the side, I would write down where I got that from, which commentator, and so forth, because I wanted to be okay with the diocese and with the Lord, of course. But this reminded me um, of the way, the story of the eunuch. I don't know if you remember that story in the Acts of the Apostles. Uh, Philip was on his way from Jerusalem to Gaza. That's what God told him to do, go there. The Holy Spirit was guiding him and all these apostles because the Lord told him to be ready and set out at noon along the road to Gaza. And so Philip did what the Lord said. He set off and he ran across an Ethiopian who was an officer of the court of the Queen of Ethiopia. He was sitting in his chariot reading by this uh, pool of water and uh, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the Holy Spirit told Philip to go and meet that chariot. So Philip heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what that means? The eunuch said, how can I if I don't have someone to teach me? So Philip explained he was reading about the Messiah and the suffering that he would do. And he was reading that scripture. We like sheep have gone astray. We have each turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquities and the sins of us all. And so once he understood that, he wanted to know the Messiah. And so Felix, Philip explained that Jesus was the Messiah, and um, he explained the scripture. So um, the eunuch said, look, here's some water. Is there anything stopping me from being baptized? So he wanted to be baptized right then and there, and Philip did. And when the man came out of the water, Philip disappeared. He probably was located to another place by the Lord. That's what the scripture says. It's kind of fun to read. So anyway, the Lord gave me a word this week that what we hear in the dark, we must speak in the light. For we are the salt of the earth. We are light in the world. And so I'd like to read to you my meditation and revelation on day three. I kind of get the idea that the Lord gives me a word for you when I receive my revelations. And like to read to you because I believe it's not just for me, it is for all of us. And so the Lord says, my daughters, the paralyzed man who was healed by the pool of Bethesda spoke to me and said, when the water is stirred, I have no one to put me into the water. He never responded to my question, do you want to be well? I want you to know, my daughters, only water that flows can be refreshing. Stagnant water is water that has no movement to it. <coughs> the movement of the pool called Bethesda represents my Holy Spirit power. There is movement to the living water, like the wind which blows where it will. If you continue to walk in my ways and trust me, my own spirit will be in you, my daughters, and my Holy Spirit power will move in you and through you, not when you say, but when I order that it will be so. You must be constantly in prayer and trust in me that my grace may flow freely through you. My daughters, when you think of me, that thought is my call to you to come and listen and be with me. I want you to be refreshing to others, a refreshment of my spirit upon you. Do not concern yourselves with what I do through others. Concern yourself with me. I want to use many of my children, all of my children, who will say yes to me. Your yes comes in a variety of ways, in action, in prayer, in thought, in work, in obedience to my word, in love. When you love, the living waters move and heal. Take note of this, my precious ones, that love is necessary for my healing power to operate. Your love for me and others, my love, is the same way. As you are a receptor of my love, so you are a receptor of my power. To the degree you believe and trust and love, so my power is manifest. I want you to lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. The sign of healing is a sign of my presence. I am in you 
I am with you, and I will work through you. Continue to trust and love. I love you, my daughters, and I will not leave you. Do not be afraid to heal in my name. It is my power that heals, not your power. Seek me, seek me first, and above everything, I am your Lord, and I will be with you. I'd like to share with you just one of the things that happened when Women's Christian Fellowship first began um, in 1979. There were like just a dozen of us to begin with. And we met in a little room to the side here. And what had happened was that um, this one lady came and she, she, was, she was so adorable. She was a skinny little lady and she had red hair. And, and that morning when she came, it was all spiked up. And I thought, whoa. It was different. And so anyway, she said, I came anyway because I wanted to ask for prayer. She said, I cannot lift my arm. There's so much pain, so I couldn't brush my hair this morning. She said, I'm not left-handed, so I, so I just left it as is, and she came. And so we, we used to have coffee and cookies. We don't anymore, right? <laughs> we used to have coffee and cookies. And so during the break when we were having our coffee and cookies, uh, she asked me to pray for her, so I laid hands on her. And... Um, and even while I was laying down, she said, oh, it hurts even more. I thought, oh, dear, oh, my gosh, what did I do? And so I, I just kept praying. And so anyway, when I got home, she called me and said, I was feeling so much better after the prayer. I went grocery shopping, and I just discovered I'm lifting my arm up, putting the, putting the cans away into the cupboard. And so the Lord had taken that away from her. But then this is what happened to me. I was terrified. I said, oh my gosh, then people are going to come to me. If she tells anybody, it's going to be scary because they'll want me to pray for her. And I'm not a healer. I knew that. And I said, it's Jesus' power to him, the all honor and glory. But that's when I made a decision. I would never pray for anybody by myself if I could help it. Because it should always be two. Because then they would think it would be me. And I know it's not me. And I know it's not you individually. So at the prayer teams for the leaders, we do two by two, but not ever the same team if we can help it, because then they would say, well, I want that team to pray for me. I want that one. I want her to pray for me. And because it's it's our skewed thinking at times that we, we think it's that person. It's not that person. It's Jesus and the power of his love, the power of his healing in us. And when he tells us to lay hands on the sick, then we do. So anyway, I want to take a look at... Um, the revelation Jesus tells us about in day four, which I think is so interesting. As we look at John 5, 17 through 30, we were asked to choose the verses that reflect Jesus' equality with God the Father. So verses 17 through 18, Jesus called God his Father, making himself equal to God. <coughs> and then in verses 19 through 21, Jesus said, Whatever the Father does, the Son does also. So Jesus is equal in power. Verses 22 to 24, Jesus said, The Father has given all judgment to the Son, and the one who believes and the one whom the Father has sent has eternal life. He does not come to judgment, but is passed from death into life. So we are already living in the kingdom. And I thought about, oh, gee, I'm really young in light of eternity. <laughs> Feels pretty good. So anyway, we are young, and we need to keep on keeping on in the Lord so that others will come to Jesus. Now, I'm, I'm going to read my revelation on day four because I think it's a teaching for us also. And so um, this is what the Lord says. It's shorter. My children, I have created you and fashioned you. You are mine. All the trials, all the joy, all the love I bring to you shapes you and forms you into the soul I have designed. Only when you are completed will I bring you to myself. I want you to know I am with you in every part of your suffering and your, your formed process because remember I am in you and you are in me I want you to know love is the key take a breath right now and know that I am so let's all take a breath 
know that we breathe in Jesus, love, and that he is with us, for he is Emmanuel. And so, um, are we listening? Those verses to me, all, that are all summed up, is the basic gospel message. Jesus is revealed by his testimony. Now these verses proclaim the word of God. John 3.16, we know very well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. So are we listening? The scriptures say, be careful what you hear and how you hear. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So our final point in today's lesson is Jesus is teaching us that there are four witnesses that reveal Jesus is the Messiah. God, who is the source of life, has made the Son the source of life. So Jesus' words to the Jews gives us four witnesses. In Jewish culture, only two witnesses were needed to, um, to judge another. They were required to provide adequate testimony, but Jesus provided four to his opponents, doubling the required amount. The first witness was John the Baptist, who was a burning, shining lamp. The second witness was the works of the Father through him, and Jesus said, greater than John's because of the works that I do. The third witness, the Father bore witness at Jesus' baptism in the Jordan and by John, and there was a theophany where the triune God was revealed and the Holy Spirit was seen like a dove coming down upon Jesus after he was raised up from the waters. And the Father's voice was heard saying, This is my beloved Son. My favor rests on him. Now favor interpreted by some Bibles is the word grace. So favor equals grace. It's like we have in, in one of the scriptures it talks about Psalm 39, 139. My, this, is a, this is a year of favor. And so the scriptures are calling that grace. This is a year of grace. This is a jubilee year. Every year right now is a, is a um, year of favor from the Lord because his grace, his, our Messiah has come and his grace is with us and, um, and is revealed to us in many ways. Now the sacred scriptures bear witness of Jesus as Messiah in the Old Testament scriptures. One scholar said that they found as many as 574 verses that point to the, or describe the Messiah. One scholar by the name of Edersheim found 456 Old Testament verses that referred to the Messiah and his coming. But Jesus, the scripture says, a commentary say, Jesus fulfilled at least 300 pro uh, prophecies in his earthly ministry. So let us pray the Apostles' Creed together. It's, it's the prayer that we pray when we pray the rosary. But let us pray that together as according to our faith. And this is our witness. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now I want to invite you to confess your faith today in Jesus as Lord. Would you repeat after me with this prayer from the heart? Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, love you. I love you. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. Will you please come into my heart? Will you please come into my heart? Please send your Holy Spirit. Please send your Holy Spirit and fill me with your love. I believe you are the way to the Father. I believe you are the way to the Father. I want you to be my truth. I want you to be my truth. I want you to be my life. I want you to be my life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your grace and mercy. 
for your grace and mercy. You have blessed me. You have blessed, blessed me. Through faith. In Jesus' name. And so I'm going to share with you my um, revelation on day five. My daughters, I have called you by name, and your relationship with me is like a bright and shining lamp in the world. As you listen to me and sit in my presence, I speak to your heart. What I speak to you in the dark, you must speak in the light. You are salt of the earth, and you are a light in the world. I have set a joy within you that must be shared with others. I have poured my love into you by my Holy Spirit, and you must share the word because it will give hope and life to those who hear my word alive in you. My word is life and truth and will show others the way. This is the fruit of obedience in you. Your obedience is a witness to many and will prepare the hearts of my people to receive me. All who receive me, I will give power to become children of God. The Father is waiting for you to walk in the path he has prepared for you. Lord, I said at that time, please show me the path. But Jesus said, I am the way, follow me. You must speak this truth to my people. Choose me and choose life, and I will lead you and guide you in my way. Though you hurt sometimes in your body and in your soul, your spirit is free in me. Take me for your joy and your love, for I love you and will be your consolation and confidence. I am your rock, says the Lord. Amen. And so, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your word given to us, and I ask that you would uh, move upon us in the power of your Holy Spirit to bless us with your mercy and your grace in an experiential way for us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.